Our military are the reason that you can walk freely on the streets of America. You have had to look at the news and notice around the world freedom is not something that's universal. There are neighborhoods where people have been moved out of their homes in an instant, everything left behind. In America, we live so well, so plentifully, that we throw away more than most people would love to have just to exist. So we don't recognize the importance of what it is that makes this possible. But what it is that makes it possible is the freedom that democracy creates. And when you watch the news and you see people exercising their right and their freedom to lawfully protest, you are seeing the best of democracy at work. When you see it turn into violence, you are seeing the worst that humanity has the ability to create. Person to person harm. Doesn't matter whether it's black to white, yellow to red, it's harm to another human being. And what I'm here to say today is that when I saw Baltimore blow up the way it did the other night, all of a sudden, anybody see that on the news? None of you have seen that on the news. Yeah. Who has seen it? Describe to me what you saw, please. Um, they were throwing rocks at the police. Um, they were burning up cars. They were burning up police cars. Um, just tearing up uh, the CBS. They went in there and looked at the CBS. And after they looked at it, they burned it up. Mm -hmm. They were going to all the main streets in Baltimore and um, burned it up. And I actually got to see it on Facebook because um, my cousin, she's in the military. She's out there in Baltimore. So um, she was locked down in her hotel and she couldn't come out. But through her yes. hotel doors, like she was taking pictures and stuff of the, what was going on outside. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I seen people like people breaking in the Michael yeah, Kors downtown at the harbor. I seen people fighting back with the police and like them blowing up police cars and stuff and throwing rocks at it. Same thing she said basically. And I seen like the police forcing people in the house because they got 10 o'clock curfew. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. This is happening in America. People throwing rocks, bottles at the police. Now, this is the deal. I've been around for a while. I have yet to find any business where everybody is perfect that's in that business. There's bad doctors, there's bad lawyers, there's bad police, there's bad in every category. Recently we saw some educators in Atlanta that were indicted for crimes. You have bad, but you have to focus on the good. You always hope that you have more good than you have bad. But be sure you're going to have bad. Can you always spot it? No. It can be well hidden. What's going on in America right now is we have to begin to have a dialogue, and that's why I'm here, to find out about what you have to say. Because the only way this can change is that you change it. If you wait on my generation, you could be dead before you know it. And by that I mean, I've heard all kinds of people respond to the question of why people run from the police. In the last six weeks, I've watched bad things happen when people run from the police that make me believe no matter what else would have happened, their life might still be spared. I'm begging you two things. One, never run from the police. If it looks like it might be the most racist cop in the world, don't run, because then you're going to be killed for sure. Two, don't do 
anything that makes you have to run from the police. And by anything, I mean this. If you had seen what happened in Baltimore, you would have seen a mother, not a father, a mother who saw her son out in the street about to throw a brick at the police and proceeded to go upside his head. Whack! 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 Oh, yeah. My champion. And when he was on television and he was asked how he felt, did he feel embarrassed? He said, yes. He said, but I know my mother loved me. My mother doesn't want me to be dead. My mother doesn't want me to be another statistic. And if that's what it took, God bless her. Because we need more mothers and fathers who are concerned about your lives. I was in Las Vegas yesterday talking with one kid about going to college or going to the military, which was the best option, but do something. Don't take a year off. Don't wait. Don't get with your friends and wind up doing nothing. Take action. Do something. Go forward. One, and I'm really poor. I mean, I don't even have money for the Greyhound bus, but I spent the money because the kid was important. I'm here today. Because your lives are more important than I can tell you. But I want to give you a basis upon which to understand it. And then I want you to talk to me because I'm going to go and ask President Clinton, help us if you agree that you want to help. Find solutions not for Los Angeles, not for Baltimore, not for Ferguson. But for the problem that we have in America with young people and the authority of the police, who, by the way, have an obligation to respect you as citizens as much as they have a right to command respect as authority figures. When they let you down, when they disgrace themselves, they have to be accountable and they have to have change. And whatever they may have done that's been illegal through the years, those days are over. How many people in there have cell phones? So everybody in here is capable of being a producer for I can the camera. I can take your picture, I can show what you're doing, I can show it to the world in what, 60 seconds? Can't get away with it anymore. Sometimes we plan on changing things. I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. It's not important. Oh, it's just another guy that's dead. Oh, it's just another girl that's dead. We have run out of time. Time is saying that we're going to get to it now. We're going to change it now. And the way that you change it is by using your real power. You can get a bottle, you can get a rock. It will probably get you a jail cell. You can get a voter registration card. You can volunteer like these students and come to engage and work with people, whether they're in school or not in school. The ones that aren't in school got to find a way to live in this society. Got to find a, a tool, a way to make money, a way to take care of a family. We can't have people that have no investment in America and expect them to care about your life. So I'm here because your life is important to me. Why? Anybody, anybody got a clue about why I say that? Why your life is important to me? You never met me. I never met you. You don't know if you'll ever see me again. Because we're... You are the future. And I got news for you. You're the only future. So let me give you my background so we can get your answers. In 1979, I became a consultant to the superintendent of education in Baltimore City Schools. I began coming into schools, talking to young people, reminding them, you think you got a lot of time before you graduate. You don't. You're going to have to pay some bills soon. Better get your education. 
You think your friends out in the street that you really have to school with your best friends? Better talk to the teachers. They're the ones that want to see you go somewhere. They're the ones that can educate you. 1979, a long time ago. 1980, and by the way, I started with Oprah Winfrey, judges, doctors, everybody I could find, bringing them together, talking about your futures. 1980, I became a consultant to the superintendent of the Los Angeles City School, New York City School. Same message. You don't have much time. Prepare yourself. Get your education. No, it doesn't seem important. Party it may look better, but you're going to need a way to make money. And you're going to have to find a way to communicate. So, here's the other thing. If you ever stop by the police, yes, officer. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Somehow, my generation, which I'm about to apologize for, is so, we've done such a bad job. I wanted to start out apologizing, but I just shiver at how bad a job we have done in preparing things for your future. You should not be in jeopardy coming to school. You should not have people on the street carrying guns, and you are trying to get an education. You should not have to watch television and see the 22 little children were killed and then think you should go to school that you might live long enough to graduate. It should not be that way. I'm sorry. I have a part in it. I'm ashamed for my part because I haven't gone out and gotten enough people to see the cost. And the cost is a baseball stadium empty yesterday for the first time in the history of baseball with the game being played. Why? Because nobody could tell how much people could blow up and get tired when nobody cares about how they feel. But we just saw it. I got news for you. We can see it here. Research Rodney King. Research what happened in your city. Research what happened as a result of some bad police mixed in amongst the good police who caused many, many deaths, a city to be torn up, and worse, an image of the people who are supposed to protect your life beating a man worse than a dog. This is how we can treat human beings. So your lives are important to me because nobody's done that to you yet. The answer of why I'm here today, any one of you could be standing on a street corner and you could be the answer to saving my life. And this is where we have to get down to. We are under attack. America is under attack. If you don't watch the news, if you don't read newspapers, you don't know, Americans are under attack. People are trying to kill us. They don't know who you are. They just want to kill you. Now, what protects us from that? Homeland security, a police force, many law enforcement throughout the country, and a military that's working overtime. And still, we're not sure they can't do it. And why aren't we sure? Because who would ever think? Baseball's been around a long time. What do you mean there's going to be a game played and nobody's going to be there? Overnight, it happened. The other reason your lives are important, you have not only the power to save my life on a given day, but your neighbor. <coughs> and why do we need a mindset of if the police are doing this, why can't we just get in their face? Why can't we just be nasty? Why do we have to respect them? Because I always have an image. You're in school, you're doing the right thing. There are people on the street, I won't say what they're doing, but let's just say it's not the right thing. I have that image of somebody threatening your mother, your father, your aunt, your sister, your brother, your niece, your nephew. And just as they're about to take their life, 
a good cop shows up and he stops him. So I know cops in Chicago, New York, Washington, Detroit. I don't know enough of them. That's why I pray for them every day. And their families. Because we can't live without them. That's for sure. Because we got bad people on the street that don't care about your mother, your father, you. They will rob you, kill you for a nickel. Because we got some sick minds and then we just got some people that just don't care. They don't have an investment. They're not in school. What do they care about you graduating? They don't care. What do they care about you trying to make something of your life? What do they care about you thinking, I could sit on the Supreme Court? Solomayer is from the Bronx where I'm from. She's there. There's a great neurosurgeon at Cedars, Dr. Black. He's not going to live forever. We need another great one. Where are they going to come from? You're it.